All right, we are live. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. We are observing today the continuation of the short squeeze on GameStop. We're coming off just a little bit here. Let's see, over five days. We actually peaked this morning at 142, which is pretty ridiculous when we think about it. That's about 40% higher than we're at right now. Nonetheless, we're still over $100 on GameStop, which is absolutely unbelievable. If anybody wants to kill me for selling my $3 calls, you can find me in Northern Virginia. Drinking Narragasset. I don't know if anybody's heard of that before. Wow, we're actually below $100 right now. 90. Okay. Did I tune in just in time to see the downfall of GameStop? I really hope not. Because I just bought more shares this morning. Okay. Um, hey, Diamond Hands, those that bought at 140 Wow, that's, uh, that's actually pretty crazy that it's going down right now. Are they diluting or something? It's, uh, it's pretty, pretty crazy. Yeah, the 3K challenge is still fully intact. I promise I actually didn't really have much of a position. <clears throat> I've been drinking a little bit. Much of a position left on GameStop. Uh, I actually sold when the shares hit $8 after buying in at 3 and I thought I was a genius. But, um, all right, this is a, a unexpected change from this morning. You know, I, by the time I made my thumbnail for this video, the stock dropped from about 140 down to 80, 88. So, um, this is a change. This is, this is different. Um, but hey, nonetheless, I don't think that there has really been any fundamental change in the quality now of the GameStop short squeeze. Once, uh, once we hit a couple of more viewers, I'll start explaining what a short squeeze is and what a gamma squeeze is. I had never heard of a gamma squeeze before, but I learned about it after people kept talking about it. I had to figure out what a gamma squeeze was as opposed to a short squeeze. We're going to talk about that once a couple more people join in, so you guys can do some due diligence and figure out where we're at. All right. So we are now down at 88. Looks like we're kind of finding a base here. I hope. See, my goal this morning when the market opened was to buy call debit spreads. I wanted to buy 110 by 115 call debit spreads for like $10. My goal was to get in really, really cheap while we were still deep out of the money with a uh, you know, $110 strike. You know, I wanted $30 out of the money. I was going to buy those call debit spreads for like $10 each with a max gain of like, you know, 490 something like that for that $5 wide spread. By the time the market actually opened, everything was already in the money or pretty darn close to it. It was like $105 at market open, something like that. I couldn't get in at the price I wanted. And in fact, when I tried to log in to, um, to Robinhood, it was down. Like the, not the stock, but the app, the app was down. I tried to log into Merrill Edge, the app was down. Webull was the only one that was working. So props to Webull for being able to keep it in play. So I couldn't get in on options though, because the options chain was already broken. So I bought myself 11 shares. It's what I could do. So I got in at 11 shares. I was up about 40% at one point, but that's okay. Hey, we are, uh, we are looking at a short squeeze is still in play. This is the type of market action that you, know, you can't predict what's going to happen here. Matter of fact, let me. Uh, all right, it posted on Discord. Okay, so people on Discord know that we're live. We'll wait just a little bit longer before people decide to get in on this here, and I'll talk about what is actually happening during a short squeeze. What is a short squeeze versus a gamma squeeze? And how do you play a short squeeze? That's not rocket surgery, how to play a short squeeze. But it uh, looks like we're halted again. Anybody have any idea how long we should expect to be halted? If it moves, all right, so Boring Analyst actually just tuned that in. 
a boring analyst says, so basically if the stock goes up or down more than 10% in five minutes and it gets halted for a certain period. Okay, that makes sense. That totally makes sense. And Starborn asks a great question. He says, is space, that's a Virgin Galactic, the next short squeeze? I would love to know if Virgin Galactic is the next short squeeze. Because I've been bullish on space since about the 25-ish dollar level and I've been buying, and buying and buying and buying. Um, my biggest mistake was selling a covered call that I let get assigned with the intention of wheeling it and just taking a premium and throwing it back into shares. I'm sure I'm not the only one who's done something like that. Um, but I am still bullish on space. I think we've got a lot of upside there. I'd like to see them get a little bit more aggressive with their actual business model. I don't think that selling 40 minute space rides to rich Saudis is going to be enough. I think they need to get a little bit more ambitious than that. Like, you know, traveling across the earth, something like that. I think that would be great for them. But, um, you know, I, I do think that they've got a bright future ahead of them. So I'm buying more space. And it looks like ARK X is going to become a thing within the next couple of months. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the ARK ETFs. You should be if you're not. But ARK ETFs are owned by Aunt Kathy Wood. She's the one who called Bitcoin. She called Tesla. She's been calling them. And uh, she's very excited to make an ETF called ARCX that is specifically focused on space exploration. So I hear that in a bull market, and I'm in. So I'm buying shares, I'm buying leaps. You let me know when. And if you think that Virgin Galactic is not going to be a part of ARCX, then you're not paying attention. So I'm all about that. All right. Melrin, Merlin Richter is asking for the black theme. I want to know what that is. Somebody tell me what that is and I will accommodate you. In the meantime, I'm watching GameStop not go anywhere. Well, let's see what else we got going on today. While well, this is pause. All right, Palantir. So I've got poor man's covered calls on Palantir right now. We're a little bit in the money. Right, what is dark? What do you want me to do on dark mode? How do I make dark mode on this? Somebody tell me how to do dark mode. Black shirt, look at NNMM. All right, somebody tell me how to do dark mode on this because I'm a noob when it comes to trading view. But I want to accommodate your needs because I figure somebody out there is still in bed. Maybe those of you on the, like, the West Coast or something like that. Bunch of lazy people in California. Still in bed. Need things on night mode. All right. We're on GameStop now. We're back at 96. Okay, good. Big move. Now, it's very important that we're going back above 100. This is huge because this demonstrates that the buying conviction is still there. There is no capitulation. The weak hands are not being shaken out. We are back live. My 11 shares are very happy. Uh, my 3K challenge would have been at about maybe $30,000 right now if I didn't sell my GameStop calls, but I did because I'm a buffoon. I thought I was smart when I sold it after I made double my money. Turns out I could have made more like 300 times my money, but we're not gonna talk about that. We'll talk about that later, how about that? All right, we're above 300 viewers right now, so um, I think it's time we start talking about what is actually happening here. What is happening at GameStop? Why has the stock absolutely exploded over the last couple of weeks? Uh, and where do we go from here? I wish I knew the answer on where do we go from here, but I'm gonna do my best. All right, so what's happening with GameStop? This is going to be the long version because we're just sitting here watching the stock anyway. All right, what's happening with GameStop? So let's take a look. How far can we go back here? Let's look at the five-year chart. You know, a matter of fact, let's go to the all-time chart. All right, so for an amount of time, you know, many years ago when, like, Call of Duty Modern Warfare and Nintendo Wii were really exciting, we saw GameStop hitting some decent highs all right, in 2007. <clears throat> Getting drunk. 2007, we were at, what is this now? About $61. Now, GameStop was a great company. They had physical locations that people actually went to. All right, hold on a second. Merlin Richter says, click on my name, and it's going to give you options. Okay. Dark color theme. All right, I got you, Merlin. So those of you scrubs that are still in bed because you're lazy and making all your money online, you can enjoy this as well. All right. Anyway, as I was saying, at one point, uh, GameStop was a really good company. It had great fundamentals. People were going to the stores in order to buy things. They were buying games back from you for like $7, and then they would go and sell them 
for like, you know, 40 bucks. They were, had huge margins. They were doing very well. As a company, GameStop was strong. This all started changing probably on around 2014, 15, especially after 2017. People were using, they, they weren't going to GameStop in order to buy games anymore. More things were done online. People were using Steam to buy games. There just wasn't really as much reason anymore to go to GameStop to buy games. So their business model was getting wrecked. Right? They just weren't making as much money as they used to. So probably, you know, pretty heavily between 2014 and 2000, honestly, like early 2021, probably, people were selling short shares. They don't, when you sell short shares, it's because you think the stock is going to go down. So you want to uh, sell shares that you don't own for, say, where are we at? Let's say $20. Okay. You think $20. Let's pause for a second. Um, those that were looking for Dr. Jim, that was yesterday's live stream. I'm not sure why the Discord announcement included yesterday's uh, thumbnail for this stream, but Dr. Jim is not here today. He was on yesterday's stream. It is recorded on my YouTube. You can find it. Um, if you really, holy shit, Bob just gave me $100. Jesus Christ. Bob, I don't even know how to thank you. You just gave me a hundred dollars. He must be absolutely printing today. Bob, you are a king. I appreciate everything that you have done for me today. You just let me know what you want me to do. You want me to buy another share of GameStop? I'm going to buy another share of GameStop. It's happening. All right, so we're going to pause my explanation of the short squeeze until I can buy another share of GameStop, courtesy of Bob V Games Are Fun. All right, let's do it. Quick trade. We'll do a portfolio reveal after this if you guys really want me to. But right now, my job is to get a share of GameStop. All right, we're in. We are in. Bob, you are an amazing person. I just want to know how much money you... <laughs> Let me know how much money you made. I'm very excited for you. But thank you for that $100. That's, like, absolutely incredible for me. You're a king. All right. As I was saying before, Bob made me a very happy man. Um, between probably, you know, realistically, probably between about 2015 and 2000, early 2020, people were thinking GameStop is just not going to be successful anymore as a company. They don't have the fundamentals to sustain their business model. So people start shorting shares. Okay, now what does that mean? When you short shares, you think the stock is going to go down. So you sell shares. Let's say at about, in 2017, let's say at about $20. You think the stop is going to go down to about zero. You think GameStop is going to go bankrupt. It's no longer functional as a company. You're going to sell, if you're a big fund, a million shares at the $20 strike. Okay, so you just sold $20 million worth of shares. That money goes into your account. All right, you think that the stock is going to go down to zero. So you're expecting that one day you'll be able to buy these shares back for like no dollars. And you're just going to walk away in the end with $20 million. All right, but that, that begs the question, how did you sell shares that you don't own? All right. In order to do that, you have to borrow the shares from your broker. You just tell your broker, I want to sell short a million shares. And your broker will say, all right, here you go. Here's a million shares. I'm going to lend these to you. You go ahead and sell them. And then in the future, I want you to give me back my million shares. In the meantime, in between then and now, you're going to have to pay me a little bit of interest. I want some interest on these shares that you borrowed from me. So you say, all right, I'm going to go ahead, I'll sell a million shares, I'll take my $20 million cash, and I'll give my broker a little bit of money. You know, every here and there, I'll give you, usually it's like 1% every month or something, something small. Your broker's happy, they're making interest off of you, and you just sold $20 million. Your goal is to buy them back on dirt cheap. However, in 2020, actually, when the stock was about 4 bucks and I was actually playing it, a couple of good things happened for the company. All right. First good thing, they had a new CEO come on board by the name of Reggie. All right? I think he turned things around for, I think it was Nintendo. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong in the chat. I think it was Nintendo. It was having actually a really hard time somewhere in the mid-2000s. Reggie got on board, helped the company turn around. All right. Um, there were a couple other people that took a big stake in GameStop. They wanted to see the company turn around. You know, They, they invested their money to help the company get back onto a more profitable business model. So good things started happening with the company. Meanwhile, everybody was shorting so many shares that there were more shares short 
that than the company actually had. The company had issued, uh, I'm just guessing, I don't really know how many, 100 million shares, but people had shorted 120 million shares. That means that there were so many shares outstanding that it was started becoming expensive to borrow money from your broker, to borrow shares from your broker so that you can sell. Um, that means that normally when the company or the broker would charge you like 1% a month for holding a short position on GameStop, there were so many shares short and demand was so high to the short shares that they started charging things like 15, 20, 30 percent. I don't even know what it is now. A very high fee to short shares. Um, now, as people started taking an interest in this, especially Wall Street bets, they realized a couple of good things are happening to the company. There's a lot of shares short right now. I really, really want to start taking on a long position. We've even got a new gaming cycle coming out in the end of 2020, around Christmas time. This is a great thing for the company. People started buying shares. It drove the price up. So think about all the people that shorted shares at around $5. They short shares and the stock goes up to seven. Okay, not only are you down $200 on every lot of 100 shares, you're also paying your broker for the privilege of being able to short these shares that you're losing money on. So what do those people do? They start buying back their short position and closing it out in order to, to get back to Britain, they're going to take their loss, but they're not at any more risk of losing money as the stock rises. So what happens is these short people, these short people, these people that are short shares start buying more to cover their short positions, the stock price rises. So the people that are short the people that were short at $5 are out by 10. The people that shorted at 10 are out by 15. They're buying shares in order to cover their short position. The stock keeps going up throughout this whole thing. Now, what about the options market? What does that have to do with this? So when a market maker sells a call to you, they will purchase shares in order to cover, at least partially, that short position. Think about it. If you sell a $50 call on GameStop, and the stock rises to $70. If you just sold that call naked, you're screwed. You are losing money every second of the day. So what do you do? You at least buy some shares with the premium that you made for selling the call. So the market maker sells a call at 50. They're gonna get, I don't know, $200. They're gonna buy some shares with that to at least partially cover their risk. Now what's happening? Are we, are we, are we, uh, are we halted again? This is crazy. We'll hold it again. All right. The market makers are buying shares in order to hedge against their short calls that they're selling to you because that's their job as a, as a market maker. The shorts are covering their positions by buying back shares. Now you've got these two really, really bullish factors going in together. And by the way, retail investors on Wall Street bets are also buying shares and calls because they just want to see this thing keep going. They're very excited. And I think a little bit is out of spite against Citron. So a lot of a lot of buying pressure on the stock right now. And the idea is, from the shorts perspective, eventually people are going to stop buying. They're going to start taking profits. They're going to let this thing start going back down. And you're going to make money if you're short. Um, we haven't seen that happen yet. So the people that shorted at $60 on Friday, we're thinking that the stock is going to go back down. Has not happened. Instead, the stock goes up to $90 to $100. It even got higher than that at one point. So what are those people doing that shorted at 60 Well, you either got to double down or you've got to buy more shares and cover for your loss, which will just drive the stock back up for everybody else and start screwing the people that bought at 90 So anyway, that's that's pretty much what's going on right now. We've got a lot of buying pressure going on because people that have lost money on short positions are trying to cover. The gamma squeeze, and I don't think I made this clear, so I'm going to reiterate it. The gamma squeeze is when market makers are selling calls to you because that's their job as market makers, and they want to hedge against their short call position. So they buy shares. That's gamma squeezing when they have to continuously buy in order to cover at least partially their short position from the calls that they're selling you. All right, and then we have a, a short squeeze in general that includes the gamma squeeze, and it also includes the part of the squeeze that um, there's a lot of people that are short and they need to cover. Now, has the short squeeze started? 
is a question that a lot of us are asking. I thought it did, but now over the weekend, as I've had a chance to kind of look at this more, I don't know if it has. We might just be gamma squeezing because the number of shares that are shorted so far are, it's still above 100%. I think more people have shorted as the stock has risen. I don't think we have that many people covering yet. I think a lot of the shorts are actually shorting more. Eventually, they're going to have to cover. And right now, I think we've got about 140%, if I'm correct, 140% of the outstanding shares are shorted, which means the short squeeze has not started. And so far, we have only gamma squeezed. And that's, that's crazy to think about, that we have gone from about $5 to $95 and halted, what is this, the sixth time? The sixth time we've halted because we're going up too much. I mean, this is a line that you just, you don't see. Let's look at the, let's look at the one month line. That already is enough. I mean, we've come off a little bit, but we were at, I think we actually did cap at about 140 at one point. Three months, I mean, we're looking at like vertical lines. This doesn't, this does not compute. This is a, this is a squeeze. Something is squeezing. It's just a matter. Is this a short squeeze or is it a gamma squeeze? I think we're still in the gamma squeeze stage, honestly. That's what I think. Now, what is my position right now? I had two calls at the $3 strike. I sold them when the stock went to about $8. I more than doubled my money. I felt smart. I bought some shares of other indices. Uh, now I feel a little bit dead inside. But then Bob gave me $100, so I'm excited. Anyway, I have 11 shares right now, and then Bob gave me her box about another share, so I'm at 12. I'm at 12 shares of GameStop right now. And you know what? Matter of fact, hey, 12 shares times 30, that's 300 bucks today. That's pretty awesome. And Robin just gave me another 5 euros. Thank you very much for that. What is that, like 6 bucks? That's awesome. Thank you, Robin. What do I think is actually a reasonable peak price? 250, 500, 1,000. Um, if I knew that answer, I would stop doing everything I was doing and just buy shares and calls. Um, as far as what I think is really realistic, we have not started the short squeeze yet. We are in the gamma squeeze, that's what I think. The short squeeze is coming. So if we're looking at a gamma squeeze driving us to $100 and 140% of shares are still short, I would not be surprised if we have at least three more of these 50% days. So what does that make? $250 would be my low estimate. And I'm really cautious about saying that because I, I don't know how high this thing is going to go. But I see literally zero reason why it should not continue squeezing. If that helps. So I am bullish right now at this price. I can't even believe I'm saying that. I am bullish on GameStop at $100. I could easily see this going to $250. That's my low estimate. Can it go to $1,000? I mean, it's not crazy. It's, it's Normally, that would be crazy, but we're at 140% short still. So, hey, $500, what? At least $650? would be my, my high estimate. If we start hitting $500, take a little bit off. I mean, come on, take a little bit off. $1,000 would be like, it's time to start selling. But $60 billion would be a lot for GameStop. I don't think the company's worth that much. Now, we can change this model a little bit, though, by the way. We can change this a little bit. If GameStop were to sell 5% new shares, it has to get permission from the SEC, but if it sells 5% dilution, that means sell 5% more shares than exist. All right, that's short squeeze, short number, uh, short interest is still over 100%, so we have not broken the short squeeze. And with just 5% more shares, the company would have raised enough money that it can pay off all of its debt and still be fully functional. It is now a, a it is a new company at that point. All right, it is sold 5% of its shares, paid off all its debt, and with another 5%, it could totally restructure into a new business model that's better for the 20, the 2010s, the 2020s, okay? 
it needs to get more into computing. It needs to have more components. It needs to do a little bit more than what it's doing right now. So I'm thinking the best thing that GameStop could do and actually drive up its fundamental value, dilute 5% of its shares and pay off its debt, and if it actually has a plan to restructure and become more valuable as an organization, sell another 5%. Sell 10% of your company. And now we are totally changing the conversation about what GameStop is. It is no longer a candidate for bankruptcy, and it is now a fully capable company of restructuring. We're now talking about $60 of fundamental value in the company. Not just this short squeeze candidate anymore. And yeah, if GameStop goes ahead and sells 5% of its shares at 90 bucks, you're going to have a ton of people, a ton of shorts, trying to get out. They would love to buy shares at $90. Drive the stock right back up. In fact, I think if they dilute by 10%, that would be bullish for the stock price, which is totally different than the typical conversation that people are having when they're talking about bearish or they're talking about uh, share dilution. That's usually a very bearish position. If GameStop does that and applies the value toward paying off its debt and restructuring, we're looking at a bullish conversation. All right, Waka wants me to show my portfolio. All right, if more people want me to do that, then I'll do that. I'm just gonna do that because Waka said so. Um, but yes, we, we can do that. I do wanna see what's going on in my conversation over here. Taylor is up to $530,000. Congratulations to Taylor. He's somebody I knew a couple years ago in the army. He is uh, and, uh, somebody else is not looking so strong on their portfolio. Hey, can we get an F in chat for those that are, are struggling right now? I'd appreciate that. All right, uh, hold or oh, let me see. All right, show it, show it, show it. Yes to portfolio, portfolio, portfolio. Okay, all right, I'm going to ask for privacy, please while I go ahead and I will get my account open, but I don't want to start like giving up my username and password. So I'm going to shrink this and I will log in to my portfolio. And I'm going to show you guys my, I'll show you my big boy portfolio because I have a feeling that's what people want to see. So don't get excited. I'm not, I don't have a huge position on GameStop right now. In fact, I've actually come down a little bit today. How do I get my whole account in one shot here? All right, I'll show you my taxable account first. This is going to exclude what I've got in my IRAs and all that. And are we good? No. All right. The screen is now in good shape. Right, let me get my internet back open here. All right, F for those that are struggling. Okay, so here's my portfolio. We'll go through this pretty quick. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to assume privacy. Okay, so we'll just go line by line. We'll just go line by line. All right, I've got Apple right now. Hey, I am a permable on Apple. Apple is an incredible company. I think they're gonna continue to dominate pretty much everything. So I own 562 shares and four leaps. Uh, together, they're up pretty strongly. This is about five. What is that? Fifty-five thousand dollars, which is awesome. Um, the problem I'm going to have right here is that I have golden handcuffs. All right. In order to actually get to the money, I've either got to start selling calls, which I don't want to do, or I need to sell, and that's going to incur tax. So even at about ten percent, that's going to cost me about five thousand dollars in tax. The good news here is. Hey, is, uh, is my volume working okay? I tried to switch up the way I was actually giving the... I should be using this mic. But I know sometimes OBS gives me a hard time and it kind of messes up. I'm going to make a change here before we continue. You guys let me know if the audio has improved in quality once I make this change. You guys, let me know if there's any change. If it sounds like I'm in an airport right now, then, then there's something wrong. All right, so everybody's saying we're good. Okay, so it's just somebody, it's on your end, brother. All right, let's go line by line here. Apple, I think, is a company that's going to continue dominating. You don't really need to do anything complicated when it comes to Apple. Just buy and hold shares. 
Uh, I wanted to take a larger position on Apple than I had cash value for, so instead I elected to use leaps. These will expire in the fall of 2022. When that day comes around, I don't know, honestly, I may just execute these and buy some shares. If not, then I'm going to close this, and I'm going to take my money, and I'm going to apply it towards shares. All right, I'd love to have a much larger position in Apple. I think this is a phenomenal company. It's just going to keep doing better. All right, Energy Transfer. Okay, this is a company that I am hoping I get assigned at. All right, I've been wheeling this thing several times. These 120 shares are free. They have been paid for by premiums. I did not take taxes into account when I call these shares free, but you kind of get the idea. I've been wheeling between 6 and 650 up to $7. I want more shares of energy transfer. They own so much of the pipeline right now in the United States. I think it's like 40 or 50% of the pipeline. Uh, you know, all the oil shipping, they're doing it. So I'm not up a whole lot on the shares. I've probably made, I guess I'm up like $782 because these shares were all paid for um, by premiums from wheeling. I hope I get assigned at six dollars because I would love to take a larger position in this company. It pays like a 10% dividend. It's paying off its debts. I think there's great things happening. We did just cancel the Keystone pipeline, uh, which is going to hurt this company a little bit because I think they wanted to be able to use that. It was kind of their project, but I don't think that it's going to fundamentally change the value of this company. So I'm still excited. Um, I'm really not worried about the Keystone pipeline. That was priced in as soon as he got elected. This is not a um, that's not a surprise. So I'm totally fine buying this company at $6. If it was $25, I'd be a little upset, but $6, I'm not worried about it. Um, Intel, I'm really banking on them getting their shit together this year. Every earnings, they just keep going back down. So it's a little bit upsetting, but uh, you know, I'm up 38% on this leaps right now. I'm just going to keep holding these ones, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hope out that they start getting in order. I mean, they're the only ones that are really not doing well in the tech sector. So I'm buying it now while I think the company's undervalued. They do so much more than they're giving credit for. I mean, Intel really not might, be, might not be the most exciting of the tech companies, but they should be valuable. You know, Intel is worth more than $60 a share. So I'm still going to hold these leaps. All right, Coca-Cola, that's just for dividends. All right, Lamb Research. This is probably the company I am most excited about right now. I've been shilling these guys since they were in like the 290s. I am dying to see more. I, I, I'm, I want more shares of Lamb Research. I just, I can't buy more right now because I don't have enough cash left. So instead, I elected to buy this leaps at the $500 mark. I think the delta on this is now like $65.70. Sam, hey, Shallow, hey, thank you, brother, for hooking me up with that 50 bucks. You guys are too kind to me, honestly. I love you guys so much. This has been a very profitable live stream. I can't believe you guys. You guys are crazy. Thank you for that. And congratulations on the massive Nokia gain today. You're the best. LAM Research. Guys, if you want to get on LAM Research, all right, shallow 487. Thank you, not just shallow. Shallow. I still want to know what that means, shallow, by the way. But thank you for that, man. I really do appreciate it. And everything you do for me on Patreon, too, you guys are the best. Lamb Research. All right, I am. I love this company. What they do is they make the chips that other companies need. Or they, they don't make the chips, I'm sorry. Oh, Shalom is the name. Okay, Shalom. Thank you for the shekels. Um, Lamb Research is a company that makes the machines that other companies need in order to uh, make their microchips. So I think the microchip industry, the, the semiconductor industry, again, oh, wait, hold on, we're gonna pause, we're gonna pause. GameStop, where we at 106, we're back on. I'm telling you guys, this is still a bullish sign that it's still going, it's still going. Lamb Research makes the microchips that other companies need. I didn't make the microchips, I keep saying that. They make the machines, guys. They don't. I'm, that's my excuse. They make the machines that make the equipment other companies, like Taiwan Semiconductor, like AMD and NVIDIA, they make the machines and do the research that those companies need in order to make microchips. So I think that while the 5G rollout is bullish overall for the entire sector, the entire tech sector, LAM Research is going to benefit heavily because they absolutely... Uh, they will they will continue ab to absolutely to supply all of these companies that need their equipment and their research. So we're talking a couple couple levels deep on the semiconductor industry. They are kind of on the foundational end of it. So I own shares and I own leaps. All right, NLA Capital. This is kind of a speculative bet. This is all for dividend. Nokia. All right, everybody was laughing at me when I bought Nokia. They said there's no way in hell Nokia is going to be profitable. Nokia is it's probably about fairly valued right now. Um, but they have so many good things coming down the pipeline. 
All right, they are continuing to demonstrate the ability to win contracts. Vivo, thank you so much for the cash. I appreciate that. Thank you all you guys that are giving me those, that money. I appreciate it. Nokia is a company that has been winning left, right, and center. All these contracts across Europe, North America. Huawei is boxed out of both. I think Nokia is going to continue winning these contracts and start making more money. They need a turnaround, honestly. They need some kind of impetus to get their stock back on track. This 5G rollout is their opportunity. So I started buying leaps. I got four over here in this account. I got three more in Weevil. I'm going to hold these. All right. Um, realty income. In my IRA, I've got like 500. Here I've got about 18 because I accidentally bought them in the wrong account. I'm just going to hold them, I guess. Whatever. No big deal. Um, dividend payer. They're a dividend aristocrat. Buy this in your income account. Okay, Palantir. So Palantir, I actually use Palantir at work, so I know a little bit more about it than most people. Um, I think that it is a good company. You know, I am bullish on the company. So I bought these leaps at the $10 strike. I kind of screwed up a little bit here by selling the poor man's covered calls at the $25 strike. Um, you know, you can see I'm down $4,000 on that. But I'm my I'm totally protected from any loss. You know, there's no there's no risk of loss at this point because my call leaps delta is so high that I, I can't lose money by selling short calls on it. Um, I can, but it would have to go up to like $250, and we're not short squeezing pounds here. So I'm just going to continue rolling this thing out for a while, um, printing more money. Right now, you know, 2600 bucks is pretty good gain on that thing. So, you know, I'm just going to hold it. Now, I'm Prudential, another dividend pick. I love this company, guys. Buy Prudential. And Triple Q, this is probably, I don't know, 25% like of my portfolio right here. I love the tech industry. I think they're super strong. Um, just just buy these. I've got some leaves. I've got some calls. I've got shares. Just just low. I and I got another hundred and something in my other accounts. Just hold it. Okay, QYLD. They're a uh, they're a covered call ETF on the Nasdaq. So they give you you know about one and a half percent a year, or a year a month just to own it. So I'm collecting about eleven percent dividend on it. The only reason I have 17 shares right now is because I just started a position. I want to keep rolling more money into this. I honestly, I have half of mine to just take my whole half million dollar portfolio, throw it into QYLD, and live off of 55,000 a year. I have half of mine to do that, but I'm not going to because I'm not an idiot. But I do want to build more of these. Um, wow, I have a lot of freaking positions. All right, we'll come back to this. Let's check out GameStop right now. $101. So we're floating around that $100 mark. Um, we halted again. It hasn't moved in about 10 seconds. So, huh. I think we've probably stabilized a little bit on GameStop. I think $100 is, is enough for a lot of people. But I don't think the short squeeze has ended yet. So, all right. Somebody's asking about ASML. I don't even think I've heard of that. I've heard of AMAT. What is this? Some funky company? I don't know much about ASML at all. 500, okay, so it's about the same as Lamb Research. It's probably a very similar company. I mean, I just don't know about this one. Um, it's probably very similar to AMAT and Lamb. There's not a lot of competitors in this industry. They're, they've got kind of a little bit of an oligopoly on it. Um, the reason I like Lamb is because I like I like how they've committed to their dividend. You know, they don't pay a very high dividend rate. It's like one and a half percent. But they have committed to increasing their dividend. They are very excited about their dividend. I think that's a good thing for the company. So I'm, I'm excited about it. Uh, AMAT is, is a cheaper option. You know, it is less expensive, actually. And a, I'm not familiar with ASML at a fundamental level so much. But I, mean, I guess if they do the same thing, then that's a, another option for them. It, it sounds like they do pretty much the same thing LAM does. So... Hey, other options out there. I mean, LAN isn't the only one. It's just one that I really like. I'm very excited about. All right. Somebody said, "Where do I work?" I work. Should I tell you? I work in. Um, I work in Washington D.C. and I make maps. That's my job. I make maps. It's fun, like five percent of the time. Most of the time, it's not very fun. But occasionally, you know, we get that exciting day, and it is. So I don't hate my job. I like it. it gives me some time to stream. And do I hold Bitcoin? Yes, I do hold a little bit of Bitcoin. I hold like one one hundredth, no, like three one hundredths of a Bitcoin. Not a lot. I did have 1.3 Bitcoins at one point, but I sold them in order to buy Triple Q, which isn't bad. I mean, that's okay. It's okay to, you know, trade in your Bitcoin for Triple Q, but I probably could have done better by just holding Triple Q. And yeah, I am a cartographer. That is my job. 
And if somebody asks about my salary, it's about 120000 And then I get like 5% from the employer matching. So it, it's good. You know, it's enough for me to invest more money into the stock market every month. And that's really what it's all about. I'm here for the cash. I'm literally, I, I told people at work that too. I was like, I'm here for the money. So as long as they keep paying me, I'm going to do more work. I'm going to do some more work. All right. Um, let's, let's do the rest of these. All right. SMH, this is the Semiconductor Industries ETF overall. I love the Semiconductor Industries specifically within tech. So I'm going to continue buying shares of these. I was wheeling them at one point, but it, it's just rising right now. So I'm going to just hold them for now, and then I'll start wheeling again after the stock market starts to stabilize. Right now, I see no evidence of this. All right, Snap. All right, this one's fun. I'm proud of this one. So after all of the social media companies started banning Donald Trump, they all went down. Snapchat went down like 12% in a day. I was like, that's... No, I'm not seeing Donald Trump representing 10% of Snapchat's revenue. So I bought leaps on it, and I grabbed them when the stock was about 49. Really good entry, I think, um, up 20% on it, which is real good. And then about, what was it, Thursday, Wednesday or Thursday, I was like, yeah, the stock has recovered a little bit. We've got uh, earnings coming out next week. I want to sell poor man's covered calls against this. So I sold them about 15% out of the, not 15%, $15 out of the money. The delta was like 11 or something like that. I'm counting on some IV crush to drive down the value of this poor man's covered call. I want that $600 in cash so I can reinvest it into QYLD. So right now I'm still bullish on Snap. These things don't expire until 2023. I think in the short term, we're not breaking 65. And if we do, I've still got five leaps left and my leaps will have gained a significant amount of money if it does go to 65. So we're killing it. I'm very happy with Snap. I still think this is a good entry point for Snap. Not great like it was when it was below 50, but it's good. So I'm gonna hold here. All right, space, I've been, see you can see here, I've been wheeling this thing. Um, I wish I had just held shares, but I think Snap, uh, space rather has a good future ahead of it. It needs to do a little bit. Am I frozen on my, no, I'm not, okay. Um, I think that space has a good future ahead of it. I want to see it revise its business model just a little bit, but overall we're, we're good. So I'm just going to keep wheeling that and reinvesting the premium in the shares. Um, SPHD, very similar to QYLD, a little bit more, uh, a little bit more stable, a little bit lower dividend. And we've got spy leaps because you need spy. My camera is block. Oh, my camera is blocking my positions. I'm sorry. Whoops. Sorry about that. Let's go over here. All right, I'm going to come over to this part. All right. Um, you guys can see there. All right, so SPY. I bought these leaps because I wanted to take a bullish position on SPY. I didn't have enough cash for 100 shares. So I bought leaps with a 100 delta. At the time, they were a little bit out of the money. I think they might have been at the money, but I wanted a 100 delta. I couldn't do it with shares because I didn't have enough cash. So I bought leaps instead. And, you know, they doubled since then. I bought these back in the summer. Um, AT&T is purely, purely a dividend play. Uh, I think that they do have some room to benefit from the 5G rollout. By and large, they've got to reduce their debt a little bit, but they're, they've committed to their dividend. They have recommitted to their dividend several times, so I'm holding it to just get that 250 what is it, $400 a quarter, something like that. And then Tesla. Guys, I would have had 500 shares of Tesla if I didn't sell, but I sold, and now I have three. It's okay. I still made like 20 Gs off of it and rolled it right back into other positions, so we're good by and large. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, my goal right now, my next play, I want to get more shares of QYLD because I think, I think at this point, if I just keep dumping money into that, I'll be able to quit my day job and just commit to this full time. I mean, right now I'm having more money, having more money, having more fun, uh, YouTubing right now than I usually do at work. And you guys have already given me 163 bucks. So that's fun for me. And the fact that we have over a thousand viewers right now, I never get a thousand viewers. I get like 200. You guys are just throwing me the love right now. I really like that. I don't get that at work. So that's why I want to quit my day job. I think I can do it if I start getting more in dividend. And Jude, thank you very much for giving me uh, an extra two pounds. What is that, like $4 or something crazy like that? $3 or something? Um, that's, those pounds are, that's that's some good shit right there. It's worth a lot more than dollars. He says, are you in any altcoins? If so, check out Theta. Theta coin? All right, and account inactive, thank you for that $5. We're going to come back to your question. The first question is, am I into any altcoins? If so, check out Theta. Yeah, I do own right now, I own Cosmos. I own Ethereum, if that still counts as an altcoin. And 
I've got uh, Tezos, because Tezos and Atom, which is Cosmos, they pay you to just own them. They kind of like give you a yield every month. Uh, so that that's great. That's why I like those. You know, it's really hard to find 5% guaranteed income. You can get that with altcoins more than you can get it with bonds. That's saying something. All right. And then what is Datacoin? Let's check out Datacoin. Datacoin. I don't know anything about data coins. This is totally new to me. Let's check coin market cap. Like it's 2017 or something. And let's see what theta is doing. We've got the alternate. Wow, all right. So that's absolutely printing right now. Okay, I don't know too much about this. I'd be interested in your opinion on it. Uh, theta, uh, da, 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 da. what does it do? Blockchain. Blah, blah, blah. So it's for video streaming. Okay, that's probably actually useful to me. So I don't know really jack shit about this, but I am interested in it. So I would love to hear more about what what Jude Health has to say. So please share that info with us. And what's his name? Somebody asked me, my into Riot account inactive said, hey, are you in on Riot? 8% week over week for months until recently with the drop. Um, so I was wheeling Riot, Riot at one point. Uh, made, I don't know, how much did I make on Riot? Uh, probably about $500. And then I rolled that into shares. I just sold out all of my um, sold out the, the the gain on it and then rolled that gain into shares. So now I hold about 20 shares of Riot, mostly for fun, and it's kind of what I'm doing in order to uh, take part in the, the cryptocurrency in general increase. So that's kind of how I got into it. Um, I like Riot. I think it's cool. I think they need Bitcoin to be like $48,000 or something like that before they're continuously profitable, but we might be getting there. So I am interested in that, and I want to have some exposure. So I own shares. I don't own calls of it because it's very, very expensive. But I'm hyped about it. All right. Why did the why did the market crash? Let's see what happened today. I was up like a lot. Um, I don't even know where to turn right now, honestly. I guess I'll just look at. It. All right. What happened to spy? Why did the market crash? Guys, I don't know why the market crashed. Because it was up too high, probably. Why are we on Amex right now? Alright. Did SPY crash? Somebody tell me. Alright, Dustin says, Are you familiar with the idea that after you own five different stocks, we're following the S&P at 90% accuracy? Um, I don't know if that's five any stock. I think that's specifically five stocks. The top five stocks. I mean, that's like the FANG stocks. I don't think LAM research is taking up a disproportionately large amount of SPY. All right, so I don't know. I don't know if I agree that this crashed. I think it's down, and I'm okay with that. Because honestly, I would love to take a more bullish position right now. All right, Snap is down. That's actually okay for me because I got those covered calls. Palantir is up still. That's good. Afria with the big tank. That's not good. All right, LAM research is still up, and Apple is up. Apple crashed for a minute there, but then it increased again, so I'm okay with this. Um, Alright, and Edward Edwards asks a great question. Do I plan on doing a video on deep fucking value? I plan on doing a video on the GameStop millionaires overall, of which deep fucking value is absolutely going to be the king of. So, GameStop has made millionaires. I mean, a bunch of 19-year-olds, about 20% of them literally have an autism diagnosis have made millions of dollars on GameStop. And now we've got accusations of market manipulation and is Wall Street bets going to be shut down? Honestly, the people that are saying that should be embarrassed that they are getting outsmarted by literally autistic 19-year-olds who work at uh, you know washing dishes for $8 an hour. And you've got people with billions of dollars in funds that are getting shown up by those people. Like, that's embarrassing. On their behalf. So yes, I'm absolutely going to be making a video on this. It's not specifically going to be on deep fucking value. It's going to be on the whole millionaires that came out of this thing. And God, if I had just taken a ten thousand dollar position. All right, you guys want to see AMC? All right, let's look at AMC. We're getting a whole bunch of requests on AMC. All right, AMC holdings. You know, I was looking at this yesterday. Four fifty. You know, I was looking at this yesterday. And I was like, maybe, maybe I'll take a position on AMC. And it looks like I might have missed out a little bit. Might have missed out. That thing is up bigly. Somebody's printing off of this thing. I want to know who it is. 
All right, people are saying NNDM. We'll come to that one in a minute. All right, M. Stricker, Stryker, Stryker, asked me a great question. He says, what is my position on SPACs? I am bullish on SPACs. All right, I think the model is great. I love that. Especially the social capital, Hito Sophia's. I've got, oh, they're down 50%. Okay, so bad day to showcase the Hito Sophia's button. I am... I sustain a bullish position on anything owned by Chamath Palihapattaya. I think that's a great, a great business model. Rockstar CEO. Anything that you can get your hands on owned by Chamath, do so. It's awesome. All right, and then we'll do Blackberry. We'll do Blackberry, and then I'm going to take a sip of my Narragansett. Never heard of this beer before. I got it because it was cheap. Because I only made ten thousand dollars, so I should get cheap beer. All right. Uh, okay, somebody please explain to me that I haven't followed this one. So somebody please explain to me the bullish position on BlackBerry. Do they have a massive short interest? Can I find that information? I right, no dividend, no earnings. Short float. Oh, shares float. Okay, five hundred and fifty-three million. So what is their short interest? I'm dying to know. Somebody tell me, please. Because this could be the next one. If they have a large short interest and they have anything bullish about them, that is going to get interest. By interest, I mean, um, oh, there is a, hey, Saad, tell me what the Chamath ETF is. I want to know that. Can I type that in? Chamath. It is not called Chamath. So somebody else tell me. Is it that SPXC or SP? I know there's like SPAC. There's also... Something like that. SPAC. It was like a SPAC ETF. I even recommend it to people. Because I think it's great. I just haven't had a chance to get it yet. There, there are SPAC ETFs. Here's one of them. Um, you can just get in on the whole industry like this. Alright. Um, BlackBerry had a couple of good lawsuits against it. Good lawsuits against it. Good lawsuit... Um, settlements, okay, that, that's good. That's great. I think we need a little bit more than that in order to justify a 100% increase idea. But hey, this could be an opportunity right now. Why don't we check here? Privacy, please. And let me check. Go back to... Actually, fuck it, we'll just do this. Spoilers, guys, spoilers. On my Robinhood Challenge account. We are still doing the Robinhood Challenge, I promise. But I gotta make the Poor Man's Cover Call video first because some of you guys tried to copy me and screwed it up. And I don't, I don't like that. I don't want to be responsible for that. So we got to do that. All right. What if we were to take, let's take a June. Let's go ahead and let's buy. Let's buy here and sell here. Let's take a call debit spread for 33 cents. All right. If we go up about, what is that? $6, six, six and a half dollars. We'll have a max gain of 200 versus a total cost of 20. Can I get one of these? Hey, fuck it. Let's do it. Do I have enough? I got 24. Let's do it. Let's see if they can get me in. I will use my available buying power to buy a June. I'm expecting to pay a debit. Let's see. Let's see if I... Son of a bitch. I'm, in, I'm logged in on the wrong account. Privacy, please. We are going to buy ourselves. I gotta log out and log back in on the correct account. It's not the wrong account. It's the wrong... It's the wrong username. For some reason, I have like two email addresses going on at one time. And it screws me up. I have to log out and log back in with my correct username in order to do it. All right, anyway, here, here we are. All right, so let's buy the 23 and let's sell the 25. All right, we're a little bit priced out now. I've got $24 buying power. Let's see if I can get myself in on this. This is being paid for by you guys that just gave me super chats. Let's see if we can get a fill here. Let's see how this goes. I'd be very happy with that. Okay. All right, fuck it. Now we await our fill. Now that is called a call debit spread. Hey, Jacob, thank you for that super chat. Thank you for helping me out. Options gambling addiction made $200 on leaps today. Hopefully you can help others out as well. All right, thank you for that. I appreciate those kind of words. Um, I think you guys are going to love the Poor Man's Covered Call when it comes to helping out other people. You're probably going to love the Poor Man's Covered Call too. So, by all means, 
I'll continue to enjoy the series as I pick things up. Normal, I should be making a video right now, but I'm not. Instead, I'm doing this. But soon enough, I promise we're going to make that Portland's Code Call video. I've already got the script. I've got the post on Patreon. I just got to be able to make the video. This things take like 20 hours. So I'm trying to do dank trades right now. I'm about more, a little more than halfway through making the video. I need to finish it this week. I need to finish it this week, so count on it. Um, Zephyr Bar call for $2,000. Wrote it up to $7,000. Wrote it way back down to $2,000 and sold. Jeez. So $0 gain, but I appreciate you for sharing that story. All right, I need to sit because my mouth is getting dry. All right. Okay. Saj says, what happens if you get a sign on a PMCC? We're going to come back to that. I want to thank Drakstar for that $5. Really appreciate that. After learning about options, I don't see why anyone holds shares. <laughs> Honestly, you know, Drakstar, you bring up a great point. Why would you hold shares when you can buy leaps instead? If you're not bullish for the next three years, then you shouldn't be buying anything. And if you are bullish within the next three years, you should be buying leaps instead of shares. And there's only a couple of reasons why you should buy shares. That's one, you want dividend and you want the peace of mind of knowing it's coming in. And two, you are restricted from buying shares, which is true for a lot of people. If you are involved in the finance industry, you're not allowed to hold shares are not allowed to hold derivatives. You must buy shares. Or if you are involved in a, um, what is that called, like an index, a market maker, anything like that, all you can do is buy the, uh, the indices. So you can't buy derivatives. You have to just buy triple Q. You have to buy SPY. You can't buy anything else. And uh, those are pretty much your reasons right there. Or you just don't want to pay attention. You're not the type of person who wants to have to check up on your stocks after three years. You just want to buy it and forget it for the next 10 years. There's people out there that are like that. And that's okay. Um, those are the ones that are buying shares. That's it. And somebody else brought up a great question. Uh, what was it though? Oh, what happens if you get assigned on a PMCC? Uh, hey, June sent me something. Ask me for more info of Theta coin. Okay. All right, I'm gonna come back to Jude. Jude sent me something on Facebook. Um, we do check the description. We've got the Facebook uh, Kamikaze Cash page. You just sent me to it. Send me a message. We're going to come back to that. Um, people are asking, right, what happens when you get assigned on a Portland's Code Call? Are you fucked? Most of the time, no. You should not be fucked. And Bob, thank you for that. Super chat. We're going to come back to that one, too. Um, if you get assigned on a poor man's Code Call, um, you have a couple options here. One, you buy shares at the strike. Or not the strike. You buy shares at the market price and cover the short. All right. Your broker will assign you a short position of 100 shares or whatever, and you cover it. All right, you buy shares, that's right. you, you are closed out, you still hold your leaps, and you no longer have that short position. That's option one. That's the easiest way out of it. Okay. Option two, your broker's going to say, hey, you got assigned on this short call. You didn't have enough shares in your portfolio. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take your cash value, and we're going to start buying shares toward covering that short position. And if you don't have enough money, they're going to start selling off your assets. What they should do is sell your leaps first. And if you sold the poor man's covered call in a mechanically sound fashion, that's why it's very important to send me, set these up in a mechanically sound way. If you set it up in a mechanically sound fashion, then your leaps will always more than compensate for the value of the short call. You will come out on top every single time if you set this thing up correctly. If you did not sell up your poor man's covered call correctly, they're first going to take all your account cash and say, all right, you still owe me about 70 shares. What are you going to do? They're going to sell your leaps next, and they're going to say, yeah, you still owe me $15 or 15 shares. What are you going to do? Now they're going to go after the rest of your portfolio, and they're going to start selling off things. They're going to start selling off the rest of your portfolio in order to compensate for those shares. All right. That's if you screwed it up. In order to set it up in a mechanically sound way, all you got to do is buy your leaps with an 80-plus delta and sell at the 30 minus delta. So buy your leaps in the money and sell your leaps pretty deep out of the money. And you will not have any problems with getting assigned early. In fact, if you get assigned early, you're actually in good shape if you set up your your uh, your poor man's covered call effectively. All right, keep all that in mind. I know I owe you guys a video on that. I promise it's coming. I've already written up the script. It's just so hard for me to find time. And when I have like a, a, an hour and a half like this, it actually, it's more fun for me to do a live stream. I think you guys really enjoy these. So I'm going to keep doing these. Um, but I promise we're not done with the actual videos. Those are still coming. Those are still the backbone of my YouTube channel. 
Um, all right, Bob sent me a ten dollar super chat. Thank you. He says, "Do you know when these GameStop short sellers have to cover their positions? They have to cover their positions when they run out of free cash. That's when they have to. That's when their broker is going to start coming after them and say, "Hey, you owe me two million shares of GameStop. I'm charging you twenty eight percent interest. When are you giving me my shares?" Those companies are going to start running out of cash, and they have to cover. When that point happens, I don't know. I don't know when these companies... When is Citron going to run out of cash? I don't know. How much money does Citron have? How many employees does it have? I don't know. But that's when they have to start covering, is when they no longer have enough cash to pay those fees. They're going to start getting margin called, and they must then cover in order to stay solvent. I mean, you could honestly, realistically start finding people running out of money and really running into trouble if they can't cover. All right. TF says, are you long-term bullish on Carnival Cruise Lines? Has good upside potential. Uh, TF, thank you for those five pounds. Those are worth like twice as much in the U.S. Carnival Cruise Lines. Okay, so there's a number of... There are a number of cruise lines that I'm bullish on right now. Carnival is one of them. Um, I still think... Norwegian is a stronger purchase than this because Norwegian has the best margins, at least last time I checked. But I do think that there is a lot of pent-up demand right now for cruises. I think this is absolutely a lo good long-term play. My play on the cruise lines right now is poor man's covered calls. Buy the 90 Delta and start selling the 16 Deltas. And you'll make cash. Let's go through an example of that real quick. All right. I'm more excited about Norwegian, but we've been asked about Carnival, so let's do that. I want to buy, I think that over the next 24 months, we're going to start seeing some bullish movement. So I want the January 2023 calls. I want to buy at least an 80 Delta. So the $10 is good. It's giving me a nice round number. I want to buy this call for $11.18. Normally, on a Poor man's covered call, I'd go to a shorter term expiration. I'd probably go to the January 2022s. But I don't know what the world is going to look like in one year. I know what it's going to look like in two years. And I'm willing to spend the additional $105 to get the two-year position. All right, now I'm going to go a month at a time, and I'm going to start selling the 30, 20, 30 deltas. I'm probably going to go to about here, and I'm going to sell this $23 strike for 50 bucks, And every month I'm going to expect to pull about $50 from this poor man's covered call. I have some good protection to the upside in case the stock goes up. If it goes down, well, I've got two years to sell covered calls. I'm good. I have very, very, very little risk of actually getting blown out if the stock goes to 35 And every month I'm going to pull about 50 bucks, And I'm going to use that to buy more shares of Carnival. So I would set up this poor man's covered call. I think this is a really good position. So I'm all about that. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What happened to GameStop? What happened to GameStop? How much money did I lose? 78. Okay. So I'm probably down about 100 bucks. Let's see. Let's see how much I lost. All right. Somebody else sent me a super chat. I'm sorry. I missed that. It was Gabe Newell. He said, remember the last time Wall Street Bet said... To have diamond hands, does no one remember March 2020 when 90% of the sub lost everything? Always inverse Wall Street bets. That is a very, first of all, thank you for the super chat. I appreciate that. And secondly, that is a very, very uh, contrarian point of view versus what's going on right now. And I applaud you for sticking to that. Because there is somebody out there right now who shorted at 140 and they have doubled their money, almost doubled their money. And I respect that because that takes, that doesn't even take balls, that takes dick. If anybody shorted at 140, that takes a dick. And I applaud that. Because I did not. I bought 10 shares this morning. I went from being up $400 to down 163 I am disappointed by this. Could be a lot worse. It's money that I was planning on throwing away. So I'm good with that. I have now... I'm no longer up massively today. I'm still up, which is good. But it's more like $100 now. Could have been a lot more. Riot is going down a little bit. Hey, I had a dream the other night that a ghost told me to buy rail. And then I kind of fell into the void, like when you wake up in a dream. But the ghost told me to buy rail. I was like, which rail? And I woke up. 
I didn't know which rail line it was talking about, so I just bought the ticker R-A-I-L. I was like, is that a company? Is rail a company? It is. Freight Car America. They just relocated to Mexico from the United States. Um, what did I buy about? Probably been about three months right now, actually. Maybe not. No, it wasn't down here. It was more like here somewhere. I bought it about 250 Now the thing's at 350 I'm up like 40% on rail over a dream that I had. So whoever that ghost was, thank you for coming through for me. I appreciate that. I'm considering making an episode where I do the Ouija board and ask the ghosts for stock picks. So I'm pretty hyped. <clears throat> All right. My mouth's getting dry. So I got really excited this morning. And I told my wife, hey, we made 10 G's today. And she's like, that's great. Are we going to lose it? And I was like, nah, we're good. We made 10 grand today. Let me see where we're at now. All right, 4,000. Okay, so we're still good, but down 6,000 from when I told my wife I was super excited. Oh, this hat. Okay, hey, where is, uh, where's my man at right now? Need hat link ASAP. All right, so this is Mr. Ivy's hat here. He uh, he produced these. He manufactured, he manufactured them. He, hooked, he got hooked up with somebody who manufactures these. Um, they're no longer sustaining their uh, business anymore. He's going to have to find somebody else to make these hats for him. I don't know if he's going to do that or not. So this might be your last chance to get in on the State of Gang hat. And he's also got some shirts and stuff like that. I'm trying to get the link from him right now on these hats. Because they, oh, wait, we got it right here. I'm going to drop this into the chat. If you guys want to get in on this, by all means, please do. This is kind of your, this is your last opportunity. I don't know if he's going to have any more of these. I'm going to double check with him that that's the correct link. I think it is. Um, I love this hat, guys. I've been wearing this thing everywhere. It's awesome. It's actually pretty high quality. You know, it's not like super cheap, but you're never going to get one of these like this again. It's nowhere else to be found. So I'm all about this right now. I love these hats. All right, what's going on with GameStop? Guys, what is happening with my GameStop? Do I have to ask a ghost about this? I'm going to be a little bit disappointed if I keep losing money on GameStop. All right, hey, we are back down to 78. We are back down to 78. Guys, I am very, very disappointed by this. However, I do think this is an opportunity to get some call debit spreads. Let's see what the call debit spreads are right now on GameStop. This was my plan. I wanted one month out. <clears throat> Did we just go to... Oh, no, never mind. Dude, that, oh, that is an ugly chart, man. That is an ugly chart. I wanted one month out, so I guess let's do let's do March nineteenth. That's that's close enough. Now let's do let's do February twenty sixth. That's a month out. All right. What I wanted was this. I wanted to buy and sell. I wanted these at like ten dollars. They're up to fifty seven. I think that's still a good option right now. I think buying the 110 by 115 call debit spread is a good position to take on. Your mat, or look, it's down to $23. I know this is kind of wonky because it's Robin Hood and it's gonna it's gonna swing all over the place. Very pretty low volume. You might have to give them a little bit more than that. There's zero. How could there be zero calls at the 115? You're gonna tell me that Wall Street Bets hasn't been buying calls at the $115 strike? That's absurd. What are they buying them at like this week's expiration? Or something like that. Hey. Wow, down to 69. What is going on, guys? Wow, I literally lost money. I'm a little bit disappointed. By a little bit, I mean, like, fucking devastated. I shouldn't have told my wife we made money. See, that's the problem. I told her we made money. All right. I think this, this honestly, might be the play right now. Bank on 100% tomorrow. $6. For $6, you can get a 110 by 115 call debit spread. Super low chance, super low profitability, profitability, probability of making money. But you're talking about a 
500, almost 500, $494 gain max for a $6 cost. Dude, drop six bucks. Man, if I had six dollars left, I'd buy it. But I bought Blackberry instead. Speaking of which, privacy please. Let me see. I don't want to, I don't remember quite what happens when I, when I click here. So, let me make sure I'm not like giving up my account number or something like that. Okay, I did not get a fill on Blackberry. What is going on with Blackberry? Are people switching from GameStop to Blackberry? Is that what's going on? I did not get a fill on Blackberry, so we are still waiting for that position. Oh, did deep fucking value take gains? Honestly, that is a worthwhile question. Did he take gains? Because if he did, that could knock down the price of GameStop. If he, ca he should he cash out. All right, we're halted at 69. God, this is crazy, man. This is like watching... I don't even know what's unfolding right now. Is this good or is this bad? I, dude, I don't know. I think I bought it like 89, so I'm in the hole right now a little bit. But I can hold, man. I'm, I'm good. I'm not worried about it. Small position out of my total portfolio. Nokia is a... Okay, so Nokia. Or Nokia? I mean, how do you say that? I've been calling it Nokia since 1998. But is it Nokia? Somebody who's like from Finland or Sweden or whatever, tell me how to correctly pronounce this. Is it Nokia or Nokia? Somebody tell me where, where that happens. All right. Uh, Nokia and Nokia is up 14%. So I've got calls at the $4 strike and at the $7 strike. So I am bullish that Nokia and Nokia... All right, people are saying Nokia, uh, Nokia, Nokia, all right, whatever, it's Nokia. That Nokia can actually make it to $7 by the end of next year. Nokia, all right, Nokia, everybody's giving me some, Nokia, no Korea, all right, these are all, these are all great ideas. Nokia, all right, I'm going to call it Nokia, because that's what I've been saying since the 90s. It's time. All right, this Nokia stock, I think we have the potential to start hitting these, wow, it hasn't been that high in five years. I think we can get back to the 2016 prices. I think we can get there. Because Nokia has needed a turnaround for a while. It has needed some impetus in order to increase its stock price. It has a lot of shares outstanding. Does is anybody tell me here? I think it's like 5 billion shares outstanding. Something absurd with the shares outstanding. So it needs a lot of pressure in order to increase the stock price. I think they can get it this year with all of these 5G contracts. And I think this year they're winning contracts, and in 2022, they're going to start capitalizing on these wins. So I am pretty hyped to own Nokia stock below $5. And uh, what's this guy's name? Maju. Stop scrolling the screen. Maju Chin. I. Says, Ani. All right, I think that's a great point with uh, Ani. I agree with you. What does Ani mean in Korean? I know the Korean alphabet because I was. Ani means no. He disagrees. Ani. Okay, thank you for your opinion. He says, Ani. It's not Japanese. Who said it's Japanese? That is Korean. He says Ani, and I'm not going to read this. I don't want to say what it says, though. I was stationed in Korea for a little while. A lot of people didn't like the food. I think it's pretty fucking awesome. Are you investing in the U.S., he says, in Korean for some reason. Yes, I am absolutely investing in the U.S., I think the U.S. is going to continue to lead international markets when it comes to investment. So I think the United States is the place to invest. If you don't know what specifically to purchase in the United States, my recommendation is QQQ. All you have to do to invest in the United States is buy QQQ. I think this is actually a stronger choice than leaps, than leaps, than spot. Buy leaps on triple Q, and you will actually outperform spot. So I am a big investor on Triple Q. I've been buying this whole, during this whole period. 
I have been purchasing shares. What do we got going on here? This whole time. Whatever. I totally kind of screwed that up. This whole brick, I've been buying shares of Triple Q. Love that ETF. All you got to do to make money is buy that. And you'll be happy. I've been probably buying it since like... Here? Maybe? Just keep buying it. That's all you got to do. And you will be happy with your performance on Triple Q. Alright, a couple more things. Uh, we're scrolling a little bit too fast for me to read most of what's going on here. All right, a RIP to GameStop is what I'm seeing right now. We're at 67. We are less than half of what we were at early this morning. I am probably down a little bit. I'm a little upset. I don't know why this is happening. Um, it's honestly anybody's guess. I think a lot of it probably has to do with people taking profits at the top. I mean, realistically, we don't know where it's going to go. Have the shorts actually covered? I don't know that either. I would love to know if shorts are starting to cover. Or are we shorting more? And is that what's causing this? It's anybody's guess. So um, I'm not worried about it. I'm still going to hold because I'm fully prepared that my $1,000 investment disappears. I'm okay with this. So y'all let me know what you're seeing on your end as far as what's actually going on with this stock. I am going to continue holding this thing. I don't think the squeeze is done yet. Volatility is nothing to be worried about when it comes to playing a short squeeze. It's possible that somebody shorted another 10 million shares right here. I mean, that's a great short position historically. If you could sell GameStop at $100, by all means, go for it. The fact that we're starting to cover now from this low 60s is, is a good sign. Obviously, it's not a good sign that we're dropping down way down, but, you know, it's all good. Okay, so people, Drakstar asks, why do people opt for SPY or Triple Q instead of T Triple Q in a bull market? Good question. I've asked myself this several times. So here's why. All right, if you look at QQQ, you're going to see long-term growth. No questions about it. Tech is flying. You are going to, hold on, my wife is calling me real quick. Uh, da, da, da. Okay. All right. Triple Q is going up. Tech is going up. It's awesome. All you need to do if you want to make money is buy Triple Q. Okay. But what happens if you want to buy a triple leveraged ETF? Let's look at five years overall. All right. Dan Garfield, thank you for that super chat. I will come back to that question after I'm done with this one. Thank you so much. All right, ProShare is ultra short triple ETF. So this is the opposite of TQQ. This is S triple Q. Now, since the market's been going up over the last five years, we've gone down from $500 down to $13. And it's not because it started trading at that height. It's because it's reversed split several times. Um, it just has all the money in the world to lose. You know, we saw some increases at one point. Um, why did it happen in May? I don't know. But we've seen spikes, and you know, we'll see March spikes. The point is, if you're looking at a triple leverage ETF, it can continue in one direction for a really long time, forcing it to reverse split, and it really winds up in a mess. This is what's happening during a bull market, okay? Even in the most bearish market we have ever seen in my entire life, from February 14th to March 23rd, we went from 82 to 146, so less than doubled during a massively bearish market. Even though, even though Triple Q itself dropped down to 2016 prices, S Triple Q did not get anywhere near its 2016 prices in March of 2023. This change right here on the base ETF tripled. Or I'm sorry, this price, it, it halved. So the, the short position should have doubled. All right, this little change right there is all it was when the base ETF had doubled in value, the short SPY ETF. Because the uh, triple leverage ETFs can get so low in value that there is no prospect of them recovering without reverse splits, you could wind up in a really shitty situation where you've got a $12 short ETF, where even if the market gets cut in half, this thing's only going to 24. And if you bought it back on January 19th of this month, you're up like five bucks. And if you bought it in October, you're back to break even. The market would have to get cut in half for you to start hitting break even. 
That is how shitty it can get when you get stuck in these triple leverage ETFs after. So if you have TQQ, on the other hand, when the market has gone selling, you're going to make a ton of money. But if the market crashes more than in half and doesn't have this absurd recovery after it, you could get boxed into a position where you're holding something that looks like this. Like if we go into a three-year decline, you're getting stuck in something like this by holding TQQ. And when the market recovers, you will not recover with it. You will recover this. That will be your recovery when the market goes back to its normal amount. With, tri with just triple Q, you are holding the base ETF. We can see, hey, we took a we took a nasty cut right here. I guess it didn't get cut in half, not by any means. The SPY did, but triple Q didn't. You know, you can suffer a massive drop, but then by June, we're already back to all-time highs. So that that is why people avoid the triple leverage ETFs because if you start getting screwed, you can stay screwed for a, forever, really. By holding the base ETF, you cannot stay screwed forever. And some of that, yes, Nidhogwar, Nidhogger is right. Um, there is decay. There is a whole bunch of stuff going on. Why that actually happens, but that's why you can get destroyed. Because if you get in, stuck in like a three-year decline, you can stay burned for a long, long time. That's why. All right, and then v somebody's asking about VTAX. I just happened to be looking when you tagged me. All right, VTAX, what is that like? That's not showing up on my ETFs. So that must be a, a mutual fund. It's probably super similar. It's probably very, very similar. So um, it's just another option. It's probably a little bit less liquid. Churchill Capital, what is this, another SPAC? Yeah, blank check firm. Hey, I'm bullish on SPACs. That's it. So if you get a SPAC, especially if you get a SPAC around $10 like this, buy it. Don't ask questions, just buy it. I mean, ask questions, but, you know, you've got a really, really good shot. You're just buying SPACs around $10. All I'm saying. All right, um, let's check out GameStop again. All right, so we're back getting close to 80, so we're recovering a little bit. I bet you the way this action is going, we, we saw another short seller. I bet you we, show, we saw a short seller down from these $100 levels down to about 63. And bet you now they're covering their short, and now they're increasing. I would love to see if anybody actually has data on that. I would love it. Hey, Mumochi, Sandayu, yes, JMU Dukes. I don't know how you found out I went to JMU. Must have been my thumbnail. Yeah, I love JMU. That's my spot. I don't live too far away from that. And JMU is freaking awesome. Go to JMU. If you're 18 right now and you're, you're a senior in high school, you're living in colleges, go to James Madison University in Virginia. You will not, you will not miss it. You will not miss it. You will not have, uh, you will not be disappointed with it. All right, somebody's asking about QQQM. I don't know much about this one. What is QQQM? Is this just the top 100? It's NASDAQ 100. What is it? What are they looking at here? I don't know about this, man. I don't know. I don't know anything about this. Um, is it new? Yeah, it's new. It's brand new. I don't know anything about it. October 2021. Um, oh, is this like the uh, the new ones? Like this is the the alternatives to Triple Q, something like that. I've read about this one, but uh, yeah, this is probably another alternative. I just don't know anything about it. And in fact, I'm so deep into Triple Q that. I'm not going to switch my game now, but this is probably a good alternative. Um, all right, there was GameStop News. Somebody said GameStop News is new. Wait. What's in the last hour? GameStop YOLO Rally Blasts on. GameStop Short Sellers Lose 1.6 Billion. Good. Fuck them. Let them. They didn't care about us when they were shorting. I'm not going to care about them while it's rising. All right, what, am I, what news did I miss? I must have missed something. I don't know. You guys tell me what I'm supposed to be looking for on that one. In the meantime, we're going to watch GameStop. GameStop is rising. Go for Nokia. It's rallying right now. Yes, I have four leaps on Nokia. Or Nokia. Everybody keeps saying it different. I want to know how the Finns say this. Nokia, Nokia. All right, we're 12%. 12% is real good. I've got leaps on this at the $4 and $7 strikes. Both of them are up right now. Yeah, hey, that's a really, really good question. How are you supposed to find valid information on GameStop right now when the stock is just going out of control? Good question. Wall Street bets is probably where you go. Dude, I don't know. I don't know. Hey, the thing is, nobody knows what's going on right now. So if you're looking for news, oh wait, George said they said it like you said on the second one. 
George, is it pronounced one Nokia or two Nokia? Let me know. One Nokia, two Nokia. I want to know what the English version is versus the Finnish or Swedish version. Is it a Finnish company? I think it's Swedish. Not entirely sure. Nokia. It's two. It's Nokia. Okay, so Nokia. Thank you for giving me some good answers here. Two. One, two, 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 three, two, 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 two. All right, Nokia. Guys, I'm calling it Nokia. Deal with it. All right, I am bullish on Nokia underneath $5, so I'm buying strikes, calls at the uh, $7 and $5 strikes. I'm hyped about this company. I think it's going to do really well through 2023. Short term, nothing's happening. Medium term, like one year out, I think we've got good things going on. All right, Palantir. Is that Palantir or Palantir? Uh, I use this at work. I think this is actually a pretty good program. It's a good company. I bought strikes. I bought calls at ten dollars, and uh, they don't expire until twenty twenty three. So I'm going to continue selling four man's covered calls. I have almost no risk of getting blown out because over five years, um, over, I was reading something and screwed up. I have an over ninety delta on the leaps. There's almost no risk of me getting destroyed on this thing. We're good. All right, y'all keep telling me Nokia. The guy from Finland says Nokia. The guy from Sweden says Nokia. So, is this company Swedish or Finnish? Finland. It's from Espoo. Or Espoo. I don't know if you can say that. Finland. It's from Finland. So, it's Nokia. All right. And all you guys saying Nokia are incorrect. I've been incorrect since 1999. All right. It's Nokia as evidenced by it being from Finland. So, Finland. All right. All right, AT asked me a question, then he said, please. I'm a man of culture, so I'll respond to his question. But he just said, please. He didn't actually ask a question. So, I can't answer that. Oh, check BlackBerry. All right, he wants me to check out BlackBerry. All right. It's 1999. We're looking at Nokia and BlackBerry. I don't know how this happened. Okay. So, BlackBerry. Um, okay, so they have settled on some lawsuits and they have won a contract somewhere. I don't know if fundamentally that's enough to move the stock. I think that this is a lot of hype, but I don't know for sure because I don't know what the short interest is on BlackBerry. All right, they have reducing, they have marginally increasing revenues. It's not bad, it's still a billion dollar company as far as its revenue goes, but it's not making profits. So something needs to turn around when it posts earnings in 2020. And I don't think they've done that yet. Have they posted Q3 2020? Have they posted Q4? I guess not. It should be this week. All right, cash flow. Cash flow matters, big time. All right, and then blah, 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 blah. All right, so they have negative cash flow. Not a good sign for BlackBerry. However, um, they can turn this around with just a couple of simple changes to get back to positive cash flow. So I want to know, what is the short interest on BlackBerry? Somebody tell me, because this could be an opportunity for a short squeeze, just because it's gone up enough. I don't think we're looking at another GameStop situation, but even if we're like one-tenth of GameStop, it's still pretty freaking cool. All right. Uh, check Jim, Jamia. Okay, Jamia, I'm actually pretty hyped about. Somebody's asking about AMC. Hey, if you've got AMC and you have above 80 delta on your leaps, then start selling poor man's couple calls. And if you have shares, you've got plenty of flexibility, man. You can do whatever you want with those things. All right, Jumia. You know, it's funny. I've been looking at this thing since December. I'm going to pull the trigger on it. I think this is actually a really cool stock. I think Africa is going to start seeing values increase. It's going to start seeing an increase in its companies. Um, book values, it's going to start doing really well. Jumia is a good way to get kind of ahead of it. Um, I don't think $54 is a bad price to get in on it. I wonder what its loops look like. Or Jumia. I speak Swahili. In Swahili, we would call this Jumia. But I think this is a West African company headquartered out of Nigeria, not out of Kenya. All right. We've got some pretty high values on the leaps right now. But what if we get, what if we get a $30 strike? $3,500, we've got years and years and years. Now let's go ahead and sell some short-term. 
Wow, do they have like earnings on February 20th or something like that? Dude, this is fucking great. This is actually really cool. We can sell 38. That's really high. This is the market is really bullish right now on this actually. All right, so we can do that. We can sell poor man's covered calls. We've got a couple of years on the leaps. There's really not a whole lot of extrinsic value here. Uh, it's just about actually about 15%. It's, it's decent intrinsic value. And then we can start selling these pretty high extrinsic values here. That's not bad. That's an option right there. Jamia is a good PM. It's not a great PMCC candidate, but it's a pretty good PMCC candidate. So. Uh, Scritch asked me, what's my average ROI? That changes a lot every year. Uh, 2020 was about 45. That's probably about the highest it's been. It's just about like 25, 30. I mean, I've, I've traditionally outperformed the market, but not by a ton. Because a lot of, all I need to do is just not screw up. All I got to do is not lose money, and I'm totally fine. Um, also, check my Kia volume. Neo, blah, 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 blah. I love your channel. I would love it very much if you briefly explain how cash flow is different things. What is a cash flow? All right, cash flow. Cash flow, that means that after all of your expenses are paid, my fan is very distracting. Dude, I don't know if it's... What happens if I do this? I don't want my sound to be off. What happens if I do that? Can you guys tell me what happens? Okay, while I did that, what happened? Can anybody tell me? I want to get rid of this fan volume. But since I'm using a laptop, there's really not a whole lot I can do about it. Uh, sorry, guys. All right, nothing changed. Okay, so it's not using my... No matter what I do, what about now? What happened there? Somebody tell me what happened. The fact that I could unplug my actual microphone and it didn't do anything tells me that I was screwed. I was, I was screwed up. So. <laughs> Tell me if that just made a difference. Way better. Okay. Oh, wow. There we go. I came better. Mic is on now. So much better. Okay. All right. After all that, it took about three buttons to fix it. Okay, guys, this is the HyperX Quadcast microphone. I am so sorry that I was using the wrong microphone this entire time. You guys kept telling me I was good. Like, oh, yeah, I can hear you just fine. But people kept chiming in and said something was wrong. The fact that I could unplug this and literally nothing happened told me that I was using the wrong mic. So that that took me, what, how long have we been streaming here? Well over an hour now, an hour and a half. And uh, all right, now we're actually better. Okay, thank you guys for coming back several times to tell me that I needed to switch up my mic. I hope that the fan, the fan is on right now. So I guess we're good. Okay, thank you guys. All right, 10 out of 10 sound. All right, this is the HyperX microphone. Hey, this is actually a great advertisement for HyperX right now because we just demonstrated that going from a terrible microphone to a good microphone changes the game. Totally changed it. So, okay, all right, I was telling Marcus about cash flow. So after, you know, a company makes its revenue, it pulls in money, it goes through all its operations, and it receives money for its goods and services, okay? Um... In order to achieve that revenue, in order to sell those goods and services, it needs to produce, it needs to market, it needs to pay its employees, all those things. After all those are said and done, you are going to wind up with cash flow. If you have made more money than you have spent in order to achieve sales of those goods and services. Um, if you have done so, you now have positive cash flow. You cannot be taxed more money than you've made by producing, I will come back to you generally. You've asked like eight times about Kodak. I'll come back to you. Stop spamming chat. Um, you have made, Jesus, getting calls here. If you have made more money from the sale of your goods and services than you have spent marketing, then you will wind up with positive cash flow. You cannot be taxed more than that. You can be taxed some of your earnings. You cannot be taxed more than that. So you are guaranteed a positive cash flow. You have made more money then you have uh, you, you cannot go back to a negative situation. No matter what you do from there, you are now in a positive environment, and your business can continue like this forever and ever and ever. That is positive cash flow. You do that, and you're good. All right. Uh, da, da, da. 
Okay, somebody wants me to check Kodak. All right, what is my opinion on Kodak? Um, probably don't trade Kodak. Because Kodak is kind of weird. I don't think they actually... God, look at that. That was crazy. All right, this is not a short... This was like a pump and dump type thing, I think, where it spiked like that. I don't really see much reason to be bullish on Kodak because I don't think they've done anything. Have they done anything interesting over the last, like, 12 months, 24 months, besides whatever this was, which was clearly a pump and dump situation? I don't know. I'd like to see why people are bullish on Kodak right now because I don't see reason to be unless you think we're kind of in a short situation but I don't know if we have that if that's the case I think we're going to need to see um, some changes fundamentally on the company before we're actually going to get into a bullish situation and people are going to have to start covering their shorts but I don't know if we have that here I don't know if we have a large short situation on on Kodak you guys let me know um, IPO we got gutted so this is probably a situation where all right, it got gutted. What does gutted mean? 20% down, 4% down. That is not gutted. I don't care what y'all are saying. That's that's a that's not gutted. Um, up from down from 24. So SPACs need to go through voting. You know, once they identify a merger candidate, they need to communicate with their investors in order to figure uh, to figure out are they going to proceed with the merger. Um, there could be any number of reasons why people would not be satisfied with the merger. But if they're not and the investors reject the merger, they say, we don't, we don't actually want our money being spent to pick up this company, um, then that's going to crash the price. Because now all of a sudden, they are, they're dead in the water. they got to go back and find another merger target. And that might lead them to just merge with anybody. You know, you remember in, um, you guys remember in Dragon Ball Z when Goku was trying to find somebody to fuse with with his earring when he was fighting against Majin Buu? And um, Piccolo was dead or knocked out, Vegeta was knocked out, uh, he couldn't find anybody to merge with. So he ended up merging with, um, what the hell's his name? The karate dude, Mr. Satan, um, Hercule. He ended up having to merge with Hercule, otherwise he wasn't going to ch get a chance to, uh, to fuse with anybody. That's what we might be looking at with IPOE right now. They, I don't know if they've actually rejected something, I haven't really looked at this at all. But they may have re investors may have rejected the merger with a better company, and now they're looking for anybody to merge with. Otherwise, they're going to lose all their money, or they're going to have to give their money back to investors, is what I should say. And it ends up being a wasted spac. All the the time, the effort that they put into here, that could be what's happening. So, uh, I would expect that. If they voted this thing down and they're no longer merging, then you should close it and move on to a different one. But I can't guarantee that. All right, I need to piss really bad because I've been drinking beer since like 8 a.m., but I will be back. All right, we back. Okay. Let us check out what's going on now with GameStop. It's kind of why we tuned in today. GameStop having a little bit of a rough time now after hitting that... God, it, this thing really hit like 157. I was up big time this morning. You know, That's pretty freaking crazy. All right, Jarrett said, please. He said, can you please answer this? What's the deal with after and pre-market swings? When they're, ma they're massive and then at market open, it's a dump. So what's happening in the, uh, the pre-market is that volume is very, very low. So a couple of people making trades can really swing the value. Uh, you know, you might have 100,000 shares being traded pre-market versus like 100 million at market open. So pretty much whatever happened pre-market is really just mentally gauging what the market's going to do. Um, it is not going, it, it could, the market could follow what's happening pre-market, but really the actual value of those trades is very, very low 
compared to the actual value that's changing hands during market hours. So, and for those that are concerned about me washing my hands, of course I wash my hands. Um, very important these days, especially in order to stay clean, you want to sanitize your hands after every time you do anything dirty, which includes using the bathroom. So it's not a complicated process here. Um, what else we got? Is GameStop done squeezing? No, I, I really don't think so. Um, I think we got a lot going on here. I think we got a lot of we have the gamma squeeze is still active, the the short squeeze is still coming. So we've got um, we've still got some upside here. It's about time it takes a it takes a break. So I'm not too worried about this. I think we still got a lot going on here. All right, Pixel says he doesn't. This is what he doesn't get about leaps with calls. You are paying per day to have a safety net. But when you buy leaps, you don't need that safety net. So why pay for it? Um, not sure what you mean there. With calls, you are paying per day to have a safety net, max loss. But when you buy leaps, you don't need that safety net. Um, I'm not sure what, you, what you're referring to there about your safety net. Um, a leaps is just a long-term call. So you you want to make sure that you have a max loss. And your max loss is the amount you spent to buy the leaps. I'm wondering if you're talking about something else, if you're confused about what a leaps is versus something else. But GameStop is at 73. I'm seeing GameStop at 75, so we're still bouncing around a little bit in here. But um, And no, fundamentally right now, I'm really not that bullish on GameStop as a company. I think they really do need to change up their business model. I think they need to get more into computer parts. I think they need to get away from um, just selling used games. I think they need to do a lot more than that. I think with shares at this price, they could make a lot more money by just uh, diluting their shares just a little bit and paying off all their debt. You're completely changing the conversation now. You're getting rid of all your debt, and now you can spend some money revamping the way this company does business. I don't know if they're going to do that. I don't know if the SEC is going to let them sell more shares at this price, but I think that would be a very welcome proposition, especially from short sellers. All right, Samson sent me the $5. Samson Simpson says, What do I think about Delta Airlines' long call? Playboy, please help. Need tendies. All right, let's check out Delta. Let's start over here. So the airlines in general, um, I am a long-term bull. I think we're going to make a comeback. Delta Airlines specifically, I think this is one of those middle-of-the-road type situations where they've got some debt, but they're still... Uh, the biggest factor right now is demand for their service. Are people flying enough? Are they going to can start flying again soon? A, a tough question. Um, how much is demand going to increase for flights, basically? Um, Here's what I'm thinking about. If you want to play airlines, don't worry about Delta specifically. Just do this. Buy Jets. Take a long-term position in Jets. This is what I'm doing. Jets is the whole airline industry of the U.S. and some of that of Canada as well. So you can take on a bullish position in Jets. You're getting the whole industry. And even if one of the companies goes bankrupt, like American Airlines goes bankrupt, you're fine. Because you've still got the whole rest of it to work with. If you're really passionate about Delta Airlines specifically, all right. No. You know, it's going to take a little bit more investigation, but I want you to look at what is their revenue expectation for when are they coming back as far as revenue goes? How much cash are they burning every quarter? My recommendation would be stay away from Delta, stay away from American, stay away from um, any of the airlines other than Southwest, because I'm pretty sure that this is the only one that like has almost zero debt. Even though they're kind of having a rough day today, it's not the best day to showcase them. I think this one has the strongest bull perspective. You know, it's actually pretty darn close to where it was before COVID. I think Southwest Airlines is in the strongest position fundamentally. And if you just want to take an airline-specific position, just use Jets. This is U.S., and I think they've got a little bit of exposure to Canada too. Although it says just U.S., I think there's some Canada in here also. So we've got a position where you could own the entire industry with much lower risk of getting blown out by one of the companies having a rough time. So I would recommend avoid Delta specifically, take on Jets instead. My recommendation to you. Um, domestic airlines need to come back first. Yeah. Hey Mikey, how will I manage Becky's college fund? Hey, if you guys have children, check out 529 college savings plans. You'll be able to make money off of it and you'll also get a tax deduction for making deposits into a 529. So hers is invested in the S&P 500 because we've got 18 years. And I'm getting a tax deduction the entire time, every time I invest. So that's what you should do if you have children.
right, Nevin says, people, did you just say people don't pay above average for PC parts? Did you not see people buying graphics card price gouge so hard? Dude, that's one of the things I was, um, I was asking, I was talking about when I said, uh, GameStop needs to revise its business model. I'm thinking that if they could get more into computer parts instead of just a video game resale, they would be in a much stronger position fundamentally. Because there's no, I would love to be able to make, I want to make a computer. I want to make a desktop because my laptop is just not getting me where I need to go. It struggles to render. I can't upgrade it with new components. I want to get a desktop. Where the hell am I going to go in order to get some help making a desktop? I'm going to have to go on YouTube. And I don't know what people on YouTube, I don't, can I trust them? Yeah, probably, maybe, I don't know. Um, there's really nobody in my personal life that's going to help me make it uh, make a desktop. But if I could go to GameStop, I will gladly, here's an extra $200 on top of whatever these components cost, help me make my desktop. And I bet you there's people that would love, love to do that as a profession. And they would get good at it too. So I want to see them get more involved in computers. We're a new generation where we're just not trying to just drop name, uh, just, just, what the hell happened? This is not what I want. We're not just trying to drop money on components. All right, you guys are getting a heads up on my 3K challenge account. Damn, I'm getting fucked today. What the hell is going on? Who's dropping? It's American Airlines and iPod. That's what it is. So IPOE dropping is causing iPod to go down as well. Yep. Sneak peek. That's spoilers. Turn your head if you don't want to see on that. No, Scritch, I'm talking about $200 on top of the cost of components. That's like assistance. I would love to build a desktop, um, but I need help in order to achieve that. And my questions are going to be, hey, does that go in this spot or in this spot? How do I do this? And he is going, there's going to be, some, I want somebody at GameStop who's like, you got to do it like this, put that over here. That's it. And then continue. And I'm good. That's what I want. And I think GameStop could be the place where they achieve that. And I will gladly give somebody additional money if they can help me with that. I'm not expecting to buy a computer for 200, or build a computer for 200 bucks. I'm expecting to buy a computer with components and then pay somebody. And yes, Mohammed, we do have a Discord. You can check it in the description of this video. All right, hey, thanks for tuning in, Jet. Appreciate that. All right, um, <laughs> those of you that actually know how to build computers, they're laughing at me right now because I don't know what the hell I'm doing when it comes to building computers. I've never tried. Dude, this is the first year that I've actually changed out a RAM stick on a laptop, which to me, I felt like a surgeon. And those of you that are offering to build me a computer, thank you for that. Um, I don't know how the hell I'm going to do that, but I may recontact you in the future. <laughs> All I want is something that can help me render videos quickly. You know, I would love to have something like that. All right, what is going on with Mitch McConnell here? Why is, why is Mitch McConnell getting love in the chat? Mitch McConnell news. Sabotage effort is a scam. Play the long game. All right. Let's read about Mitch McConnell. What's he doing here? Refuse. All right. I'm not dealing with this shit. So we are going to get rid of... I've done this once and it worked. Let's see if it'll work again. We're going to delete, literally delete the paywall. But can I... No, nah, it's still not going to let me scroll down. Damn it. <sighs> Fucking capitalists with their paywalls. <sighs> See, that's why like Fox News is just eating the market. Market share. Because they never make anybody pay. Alright, plays the long game. All right, we're going to read British news about the United States. Uh, da, 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 da. Ba, 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 ba. Is he canceling stimulus or what? This is all like theoretical information. All right, yeah, I'm probably going to have to use YouTube there. We got a couple of uh, couple of guys dropping me some links for it. Hey, Waka, you ask a good question. How can I get in on lithium? It's like this. Here's how you get in on lithium. Lit. Lithium and battery ETF. That's all you got to do. Just buy this. I don't know jack shit about the lithium mining industry, but I know if you buy lithium, you can do it through this ETF, and you're going to fucking print. So there you go. Lit. L-I-T. All you got to do. Don't worry about the individual companies. I don't know shit about those companies. 
But there you go. <clears throat> All right. Um, people are talking about Palantir. How fucked are my poor man's covered calls right now? Not that fucked. They're not that fucked. Um, I've got a twenty-five dollar call. Break even's like twenty-six, but I've got the ten dollar strike, so I'm really still in a good position to roll. Oh, that's what I'm gonna do. And let's check out GameStop. I'm going to sell my GameStop when the short interest is below 90%. That's what I'm going to do. Until that happens. Until we go... God, look at that. That's freaking crazy. Until we go below 90%, I don't see the short squeeze as having been completed. I think we're starting to see some, some panic selling and some profit taking here at the top. I'm down. I'm not even going to front with you guys. I'm down. Like, I was up about $500 this morning. And now I'm down. Down bigly. And that's okay. And that's all right, because I still think we've got some more room to go. My biggest concern right now is uh, is Afria. Afria has been dicked lately. Afria is down. Let's see, what, what is my... Uh, I'm still up. I'm mean, up you know, 163%. I only bought one. But what is my delta right now? All right, my delta is 73. So this is about the bare minimum you can be at and sell poor man's covered calls. That's like really minimum. But I can achieve it. If I go out to, let's say, the February 12th and sell the 16s, uh, we're looking at like 17. That's like the type of poor man's covered call I can sell right now. So... That's that's what I'd be looking at every two weeks. It's really not a whole lot. It's almost not even worth taking a risk. I'll wait until it starts going up. Um, all right, so somebody's asking, how do I find short interest? I have no fucking idea. I wait for other people to tell me what it is. I wait for Wall Street bets to tell me what the short interest on a stock is. I would love a way that I can find out myself. That's what I really, really, really want to do. Somebody, please, in the chat, give us a link so that we can immediately find short interest on something. I mean, what happens if I just type in short interest on GameStop? I'm going to get all kinds of weird stuff. Interest. All right, interest. GameStop, can I find it here? Yahoo Finance, are they going to tell me my short interest? Wow, we're below 70. Market Watch, Bloomberg, Bloomberg Earnings. Does it tell me my short interest here on Yahoo? I don't think it does. Um, I'm dying to know. Market beat, people are showing me some questions. All right, so on Twitter we got this homeboy right here, Squawk. All right, if I'm on my Twitter, let's look for our homeboy, Ig Squawk. All right, he's on the floor, and he says, short interest stocks, GameStop, 82? Or is that the price? GameStop halted. GameStop halted again. He's showing me my stock price changes, and I'm showing me. No, showing me short interest. Yeah, he's not showing me the short interest on these stocks. He's just showing me the changes. Appreciate that, but 82 million are short. I don't know. I usually wait for people on Wall Street bets to tell me what the short interest is on these stocks. Oh, check statistics, he said. Check statistics. Let's see. Price to earnings, price to book. This is all good information, but I need short interest. There we go. Sales, share short. All right, as of December 2020. Okay. It's not, I mean, that's good. That's good. It's not showing me the most critical data, but it's helpful. 
All right, 71 million are short versus shares outstanding. That should be visible here. Volume, average volume. Well, if that were the case, that wouldn't quite be enough information for us. Yeah, it's a little bit outdated. Statistics is not, this is like, this is good information, but it's not quite as up to date as we need. I need the January. I need like the daily information. I don't know where you can get that from. I just wait for somebody who's like got $100,000 invested in GameStop to tell me where it's at. If it's still more shares than outstanding, if there's more shares short than there are outstanding, then we're still a candidate for another short squeeze. I think all right, it'll be reported Wednesday after the market. Thank you, some random dude. I appreciate that. It's a great username, by the way. Hyped about that. 138.08. That's really, really specific. So I'm assuming Mamochi Sandayu is correct. That's since he's got five significant figures, I assume he's got accurate information. So 138.08. That's actually higher than it was before the squeeze started. So I think we're still in a position where we should anticipate further short squeezing. Now, I know that's pretty tough right now for the people that bought at hundred dollars shit it's hard for me i bought at 90 something how much am i down i just want to see how much am i down right now on gamestop and why is there a red bell as soon as i open ah here we go according to weeble we're seeing extreme market volatility we're seeing delayed filled reports please be aware that you will not be able to cancel or modify your order if it was filled all right according to weeble if you change if you uh if your order is already filled you can't change it back in time you can't go back in time to change it oh guys i get a free stock i got three free stocks let's see what it is i kind of want to do this on i kind of want to do this live let's do it here i'm going to hey give me privacy please everybody i am going to we're going to open up my free shares live these are from Weeble. Weeble, I've been, um, I've been buying, I've been depositing into Weeble because I think I think it's actually a really good service, honestly. Um, can I get to it? But they really, they're only on mobile, really. I mean, they have a desktop app. It's not that good. Mm, yeah, I can't even open the free shares. I'm just gonna hold the camera up to this, my cell phone up to the screen while I open up these free shares. I'm very, very excited. This could change my game. All right, guys, we've got, this is even helping. I don't even know if I can do this, but I'm gonna try. I'm a man of the people. All right. Ignore all the junk behind me. We have seven free shares. Uh, on Weeble. All right, I'm at seven. We have three. First one, $59 for CMP. That is fucking great. I love referrals on Weeble because you get a better chance. Another CMP, they're all gonna be CMP. I guarantee they're all gonna be CMP. Yep, three of them. CMP, all three, $180. Thank you, Weeble. I love Weeble's referral program because they actually give you a worthwhile amount of money versus Robinhood where you get like $4 per share. Weeble gives you like a 10% chance of getting something higher. And if your first one is a $60 stock, you're getting all $60 stocks. That's why I love Weeble for that. You know, I'll get like, you know, with my Robinhood, my Robinhood, my YouTube channel, I'll get maybe like 10 referrals a month today. Big stuff. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Sometimes I'll wind up. I wound up with um, a bunch of Zynga one month when I did a, when I did that promotional video where they gave me three hundred dollars to make a promo for it. I got like you know a dozen. What was it? I think it was more like 16, 17, 18 people signing up. I got a bunch of shares of Zynga, so I was a little upset. Um, but most of the time, it's it's really not hard. You know, you you'll get a sixty dollars stock a good ten percent of the time, and you know I'll get you know ten referrals a month, so. It's pretty often that I'm getting about, you know, a couple hundred dollars a month from Weeble. It's really freaking cool. Um, options are not expensive on Weeble. 
why are options more expensive on Weeble? I haven't experienced that myself, Eyes of Chaos. I'd be interested in hearing your experience. I haven't had options be more expensive on Weeble. I've actually had better luck getting fills on Weeble versus other other companies. Um, Ninja Men in the House says, do you have any op opinion on MFA Financial high dividends, long consistent background? All right, let's look at MFA Financial because I've heard of this stock before, but I've never I've never messed with it. MFA. I think this is one of the companies that they expected to really struggle with margin calls at one point. I think back in like March. Yeah, this was one of the, is this, I think this is one of the companies that got margin called. Hey, if they are back to positive cash flow, then eh, no no risk, man. Just go for it. I mean, revenue's increased for 2019, but we need to see more um, I don't know too much about this company, but if they have positive cash flow, then this is a buy. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. There's a whole bunch of these companies that were at risk of margin call. New York Mortgage Trust is another one. They were down to like a dollar and change at one point. I think they were like a dollar twenty, something crazy like that. Yeah, a dollar oh eight. If uh, if these companies are back to positive cash flow and they're paying their dividends, then buy them. Like, don't ask questions. Just just buy. Uh, I don't know if MFA is. I want you to check that out first before you make any decisions. If they are in positive cash flow, they are outside of, uh, they're no longer at risk of margin call, they're fine, they're solvent. If that's the case, then yeah, go for it. It looks like they've had an ex-dividend date pretty recently. So that's a pretty good sign that they're keeping it real, um, that their money, their income is valuable. This this could be a good opportunity to buy here. All right, BlackBerry is buying. All right, people are saying BlackBerry Moon, I see rocket ships. Jose, this is when we're going to return to Monkey. I don't know Monkey. Who is Monkey? You're talking about mon monkey do? Is that what you're talking about? Let me know. All right, BlackBerry has not has not mooned. I don't. I do not see evidence of moon today. I mean, we're up twenty percent, but you know we're we're on a consistent decline. I need to see a turnaround here before I'm ready. That said, I have gotten into BlackBerry. I just placed that call on BlackBerry today. God, I mean, I am getting fucked today on Robinhood. Uh, I still don't have a fill on BlackBerry, so just holding out for it. Holding out for it. Yeah, I wonder if Deep Value is still holding. Ishmael, you're talking trash. Back it up. Back it up. Talk trash. You got back it up first. All right. Um, I'm still holding. GameStop is holding nice and steady, so that's that's actually not too bad. Uh, if we were really melting down now, I'd be a little bit concerned, but I think I don't think the 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 fundamentals here have changed. I think we're still looking pretty good for a continued short squeeze. All right. Are people really switching over to Nokia? That's great because I got leaps. If we're above five dollars, no. Hey, that's still pretty darn good. For Nokia, this is pretty good. And apparently, that's the correct pronunciation now. Nokia, not Nokia. All right, um, you guys just keep dropping shit. There's just like your take on CCIV. Dude, I don't know what the hell CCIV is. I don't know about this stock. Is this another one of those SPACs? Dude, if it's a SPAC, I'm not going to know about it unless it's owned by Chamath. If it's owned by Chamath, I'm, I'm saying buy. If it's not owned by Chamath, buy if it's close to $10. Like SPACs right now, the industry is just hot. It is a hot industry. Buy any SPAC close to $10. Between 10 and 11, don't ask questions. Just buy it, man. It's not hard. If it's owned by Chamath, and it's thirty dollars now is when I start thinking about it. I don't know about Churchill Capital. Who who owns Churchill Capital? I mean, here's the thing about SPACs: is you're putting a lot. Turn up my volume. Okay. All right, volume is up. If it is a SPAC and it's not owned by Chamath, you really gotta stop. Um, you gotta stop and look. Who is owning this company? Who? Which which company is it buying? You know. Um, I don't know about. Somebody's saying this is going to merge with Lucid. I don't know what Lucid is. Uh, if it's uh, if Lucid is a good company, then buy this buy this spac. If Lucid is not a good company, don't buy the spac. There's so many spacs out there right now that there's probably more spacs than there are good companies to merge with. Um, that puts you in a tough position where you got to kind of pick and choose. I trust Chamath. So, my mom just sent me a text. She says, is the baby awake? I don't think so. Oh. 
The baby is awake. Yeah. If the stock is owned by Chamath, there's so much Chamath. If it's being run by Chamath, I, I trust it. I think he's a good CEO. Um, I don't agree with him on anything he says, but he's probably better at this than I am, so by all means. All right, people are asking me, how the fuck do I not know about Lucid? What the hell is Lucid? Lucid, company. What is Lucid? Lucid Motors. What is it? Electric cars. All right, it's another electric car company. Yeah, go ahead, man. Bullish. Bullish is my answer on it. I think electric cars are going to keep doing well. I think Tesla is kind of the winner right now. All right, um... PSTH, it's another SPAC, man. Same same situation, man. Look at what it's merging with and see if it's worthwhile. If it is, then go for it. If it's not, then don't go for it. That's all. If it's owned by Chamath, just get it. Um, time to wrap it up. My mother says it's time for me to stop streaming. I guess she's tuning into the stream. Hey, Mom. Um, I'm going to go get the baby, but I'm going to come back down with her and see if she'll cooperate. Usually she gives me a good 10 minutes. Lucid is the only viable competitor to Tesla. Interesting. All right, hey, if you guys are bullish on on Lucid, then buy the SPAC ahead of time. It's awesome. In fact, buy the units. Don't buy the shares, buy the units. All right, but my, my daughter is apparently awake, so I'm going to go grab her. Um, you guys are welcome to stay. We'll see if she'll let me stream a little bit longer. If not, then I am going to cut it off, but we'll uh, we'll see. I'll be right back. All right, we're back. We got baby Becky here. She's going to have her snack. There you go. You got you to gotta hold this. You can't just hold it in your mouth. You got to actually hold it with your hands. She's usually pretty good at eating, but there you go. Okay. That's a microphone. Yeah. Okay. So this poor baby is probably going to have a camera in her face when she's like 10 and she's going to be trading stocks before she's legally allowed to because she is Becky Billions. Go ahead and you can eat it. She's not quite good at eating things yet. She's getting there. Getting there. Here you go. This is for you. You can hold this. No, no, I'm not giving it to you in your mouth. You can hold it with your hands if you want it. All right, TF says he's balls deep in DRN. Any opinion on it long term? Uh, God, thank you for the super chat. I really do appreciate that. Direction Daily Real Estate ETF Trust. Okay, this is interesting. I've never heard of this. But as far as real estate goes, I'm actually really interested in getting in on real estate right now. I'm wondering why this has struggled so much to recover from its crash, though. Um, you know, I think with the, the, uh, the moratorium on evictions right now, you know, we, we've got some um, we've got some tough fundamentals to move through when it comes to real estate, but by and large, um, this is a good long-term hold. Now, I don't know about this ETF specifically. I mean, I think there's other ETFs too in the same space. But if we look at, oh, let's see, let's see, uh, what is this one? Why is it DRN? What does that stand for? Direction Daily Bull. Three times. The fact that it's leveraged is a little bit more concerning than anything else. Um, I think what I said prior about S triple Q, I think that's what's capturing this. This fact that it's triple times. 
Um, the fact that it crashed and hasn't been able to recover probably stems from the fact that it was down so low that even by, by being triple leveraged, it doesn't have enough muscle to get back to its previous highs. Um, this might be an opportunity to buy more, more than anything else. I think if you're holding, you're going to be holding for a long time. But you might be able to get away with it if you buy more. There you go. I think that's probably the move right now, personally. Um, if you want to get into real estate, just a heads up, this is something that's long term down the road, but we're going to be pitching it at some point. Theta Gang, by Theta Gang, I mean like Kamikaze Cash and the, the Trap House team, the Discord team. Um, we're going to be establishing an REIT, a real estate investment trust, and purchasing residential properties that we're going to rent out to tenants. So, you know, the classic real estate investment trust, that's something that you guys might have an opportunity to invest in down the line. Uh, we're trying to do that toward the end of 2021. It's something that we're working on right now. We're talking to lenders. We're talking to investors. Uh, it's something that we're going to produce. So it could be an opportunity for you guys. And yeah, Becky will be part of that. She'll be part of Theta Gang. This poor kid is going to be a millionaire. But I'm going to have high expectations of her. So Can't get away her whole life with just eating snacks. We're going somewhere. Uh, if you want triple leverage ETFs, then you want to get... This is my favorite. They split yesterday. Today is the first day trading post-split. I think they split two for one. You can get into TQQ. If you're bullish on the tech industry, which is like U.S. overall, then you can get phenomenal exposure with TQQ for 100 bucks. And Chris says, do I have millions? No, not, not quite. <laughs> not quite yet, but we're getting there. A Wall Street Bets funded REIT? No, we're not going to be funded by Wall Street Bets. We are funded by Theta Gang specifically. I will never trust Wall Street Bets to fund my REIT. That's crazy. All right, you're about done? All right, I'll put her on the floor, and if she's not down to chill, then we're going to wrap this up. But it's been a two-hour stream. That's pretty long for me. So, Do you want to play with hand sanitizer? Yeah. Here you go. You can play with this. Yes. <laughs> No, you want to play with something else? You want to play with this? You want to play with this Robin Hood debit card that I've literally never used? You want to play with this? No. She knows better than that. All right. Probably looking at uh, looking at wrapping this up here. Oh, you guys can't see the name. This is T Triple Q. This is the. Uh, NASDAQ ETF triple leveraged. I think this is probably one of the few triple leveraged ETFs that I would take a bullish position on. All right, Holy Macaroni's asked me several times now. He said, all right, look at, look at NEO. This is actually the stock I'm supposed to be trading for the 3K challenge next episode, which we're going to do as soon as I finish the PMCC video. All right, NEO, hey, I've been looking at this frequently. Um, I really don't, she's going to take the mouse. Becky's in control of the mouse right now. Um, I'm really not excited about triple leveraged ETFs. A triple leveraged ETF. Why am I? Stop, stop. You're messing me up. You're messing me up. I'm talking about triple leveraged ETFs. I am excited about triple leveraged ETFs. I'm not typically excited about NEO because it's a Chinese company. And I was so close to wheeling luck in coffee. I'm so glad I didn't. <laughs> so glad I didn't wheel luck in coffee because that thing crashed down to nothing. And in fact, if Becky wasn't like screaming when I was trying to trade Luckin Coffee, I probably would have gone ahead and started wheeling Luckin. So she saved the day. Um, I don't know if Neo has those types of scams going on with their balance sheets, but the fact that it's Chinese just scares me. And maybe that's a little bit racist. I don't know. You guys can tell me if it is, <laughs> but um, that's the only reason I'm not bullish right now on Neo. Otherwise, I would take a bullish position. Um, I'm probably going to end up with either a PMCC or an Iron Condor. All right, all right, you're messing it up. She's got the mouse, and she's messing this up. Stop, stop, stop. I'm going to unplug the mouse so she can play with it. All right, we're going to wrap this up in a few minutes, guys, because I can't even... Uh, I can't un-inspect element. Yeah, thanks, Becky. You messed up this thing. All right. 
we're getting uh, we're getting rough here. So uh, I'm not gonna be able to achieve any further stream. <laughs> Thank you guys for tuning in, and those of you that sent me those super chats, especially the last guy. I want to give you recognition for doing that. Um, he sent me five dollars and then didn't even ask any questions. So what was his name? Steven Bedrosian. Thank you very much for sending me that five dollars. Getting me five dollars closer to quitting my day job. He says, "Thank you guys so much for that. I really do appreciate it." Um, I'm gonna wrap up the stream here just because we kind of have to, since Becky is not gonna cooperate any longer. But thanks so much. I hope you guys enjoy. a hey, Iron Hands. Remember, Iron Hands, but Iron Hands intelligently. That's my outgoing message. And no matter what happens, keep depositing and keep buying. That's all. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate y'all.